I read the following recently, and this made me think. The story is told of a man who got a permit to open the first tavern in a small town. And, and members of the local church decided to strongly oppose this bar opening. So they began to pray that God would intervene. And a few days before the ta tavern was scheduled to open, lightning hit the structure and it burned down to the ground. The people of the church were very surprised, but very pleased. Until they received a notice that this would-be tavern owner is now suing them. He contended their prayers were responsible for, building, for uh, burning down the building. And they, the church, denied the charge. And at the conclusion of the preliminary hearing, the judge said this, At this point, I do not know what my decision will be, but it seems to me that the tavern owner believes in the power of prayer and the church people don't. Now, writing from a prison cell in Rome, the Apostle Paul wrote about the attitude that a Christian should have. And the question that I want to ask you this morning is this. Are you, and that includes me, eh? are we spiritual stable? How spiritual stable are we? I took the dictionary and I thought, let me go look up what the word stable means. And there were three um, definitions given. Steady or firmly fixed. Not likely to move or change. Or sensible and dependable. So I thought, okay, let me put it into three questions. So I can say to you this morning, are you steady and firmly fixed in Jesus? Are you likely to move or change? That's in your faith. Are you sensible and dependable? Can God depend on you to defend him? If somebody says again, anything against him or your faith, what are you going to do? What are your response going to be? Will you defend him? Let's read Philippians 4 from verse 1 to 9. Philippians 4, verse 1 to 9. Therefore, my brothers, you, you, who, whom, you whom I love and long for, my joy and my crown, that is how you should stand firm in the Lord, dear friends. I plead with Yehudia and I plead with to agree with each other in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, loyal yoke fellow, now, yoke fellow is something that was taken from a Greek word, and it actually means companion. Help these women who have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident, evident to all. Because the Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by power and petition, with thanksgiving, present, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. 
finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. Now when the Apostle Paul wrote to the church of Corinth, be steadfast and be unmovable and always abounding in the work of the Lord, he was actually calling for spiritual stability. And when James wrote that a double-minded man is unstable in his ways, that too was a call for spiritual stability. When Peter wrote that God desired to perfect, confirm, strengthen, and establish you, that also as a result of casting all your care onto him is also a call for spiritual stability. And then the Apostle John said that he had no greater joy than to hear that his children walked in truth. And that's also spiritual stability. Now, as Christians, we are over and over called to be consistent, to be stable, to be strong, to be courageous, unwavering uncompromising. How many times do we compromise? Let's face it. Persecution and hostility and rejection, trials and temptations comes to derail us. But let us then resist Satan and his works and take up the authority and firmness in which Jesus wants each one of us to operate in. Man, if you are attacked by Satan and you're fighting him and you're resisting him, Satan, in the name of Jesus, just go. I can also get in that mode. Especially when, when something negative pops into my head while I'm busy with something, I can also just say, Ach, man, Satan, it's at no need, what shall we do? Yep, and carry on. But most of the time, what do you do? I raise my voice, I'm firm, I take authority because Satan is under my feet. He's under your feet. And we need to take that authority. And when we take authority, we need to be firm and aggressive. That's something that we are learning in our cell group at the moment. So be careful. We are getting firm and aggressive. I'm teaching my children at school how to listen to the voice of God. How to know that it's the Holy Spirit speaking to them, and we're not. So I was very excited last week, Monday, when, when one of the little girls came storming into my class, and she said, Teacher, you know what happened this weekend. I went to my mommy and daddy, and I said to them, they must quickly come for a walk with me, because there's a dead animal on the farm. And they actually took her by the hand, and they went for a walk, and she said to me, Guess what? We found a dead buck. Sometimes I say, 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 I say
So she says, Aish, karamba. They looked at me as if I was mad. <laughs> but you know what? I could once again just tell them. Again, how do you hear the voice of the Holy Spirit? How do you listen to them? How do you take authority? I'm completely off the track. We want to be spiritual stable. In Philippians 4, we are giving, given a pattern, a recipe that produces spiritual stability. Not one of us want to be defeated. Not one of us like to be depressed. No one likes to fall into temptation and therefore into sin. No one likes persecution or going through a test and then failing the test. Therefore, we can say that there is a desire in us to experience God in His fullness and be an overcomer in Christ because each one of us naturally wants to be a winner. We don't want to be losers. We want to be winners. But how do I then become stable? The key phrase is, stand firm in the Lord, stand against doubt, stand against temptation, trials, tests, and persecution. When I read this passage of Scripture, five things popped up to me. And in verse 1 and 2 and 3, it's about the love and the peace in the fellowship. And it's also about the unity in the church. And then when we read verse 5, it's about maintaining the spirit of joy. Now please take note. If you attach your rejoicing to your circumstances, it's going to come and it's going to go. Dit gaan wipplank rai die hele tyd met jou. But if you attach your rejoicing in God, it's going to stay the same. Because He never changes. Then we get to verse 5. Accept less than you deserve. And here he's talking about humility. It's the attitude of a person who seeks nothing so that when he gets nothing, he's not concerned about it. Isn't it true sometimes that we do something and we are at least expecting a thank you from someone and then it doesn't happen and then you're disappointed? Rather seek nothing and then don't get disappointed or offended. Verse 6 is all about trusting the Lord. It's all about having faith. Be anxious for nothing. Be calm in the midst of your storm. And this has to do with gratitude. React. To your problems with a prayer, a thankful prayer. We need to be thankful no matter what we're going through because we need to realize that through everything going wrong and being in the storm, God is accomplishing some purpose in our life, some purpose through this thing that you're going through. It's about all about how are you going to handle the storm, the thing in the storm. How are you going to handle that? Going through a difficult thing, will you still be thankful? If you don't get what you ask, will you still be thankful? Verse 7. In verse 7, we can see that spiritual stability comes through peace, joy, humility, faith, 
and gratitude. And when your life is characterized by these attitudes, we will not lose the balance and we will not get knocked over. Then we get to verse 8, where Paul is saying, Finally, brethren, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence and anything worthy of praise, let your mind dwell on these things. Now, may our minds dwell on these things because the Bible, the Word of God, clearly states that a man's heart is who he is. In Afrikaans, there's a saying, van die hart vol is, loop die mond van oor. And it's true. Just listen to people when they speak. Wanneer hulle met jou praat, kan jy baie dingetjies optel. Jy kan baie gau achterkom, waar staan hulle met die Heere? Het hulle ooit een verhouding met die Heere? As hulle kwaad is vir iemand, waar oor het gaan? Jy kan, just listen to the way they talk. And you'll pick up a problem just like this. You are a product of your thoughts, of your thinking. And we need to renew our minds daily. Verse 9. Verse 9 is very clear. The things you've learned, received, heard, and seen in me. Practice these things. And the God of peace shall be with you. Now, Jesus maintained a perfect attitude in every situation. He prayed about everything, but he worried about nothing. We too should see God's guidance about every aspect of our lives and allow his perfect will. But without interference. Jesus' attitude was never to become defensive or discouraged or depressed because his goal was to please the Father rather than to achieve his own agenda. In the midst of his trials, he was patient. In the midst of his suffering, he was still hopeful. In the midst of blessings, he stayed humble. Even in the midst of ridicule, abuse and hostility, he made no threats and did not retaliate. Instead, he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. How easy do we judge other people? I want to end off this morning by reading you another scripture. Romans 12 verse 1 and 2. Therefore, I urge you brothers in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. He is good, pleasing. And perfect will. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you love us no matter what. Lord Jesus, we want to ask you this morning to help each one of us that gentleness will be evident 
evident in our lives, Lord. We want to ask you, Lord Jesus, to give us peace. And Lord Jesus, whatever we do, that our actions will be right and pure and noble and praiseworthy. Help us to always rejoice in you. Even, Lord Jesus, when things go wrong, let us still rejoice. Let us put you first. Help us not to get anxious about anything. Help us to always be thankful, even when we are going through something difficult. And where we might still be struggling in some areas, Lord, let your grace abound to us. Lead us, Lord, and guide us through your Holy Spirit. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.